Hello, my name is Jason Shapiro, and today I'm going to be introducing you to our complete object-oriented analysis and design with RUP, also known as the Rational Unified Process, and UML, also known as Unified Modeling Language. So let's start with what we're going to be covering in this class, the course objectives. Overall, what you're going to be learning in this class is how do you take a complex problem and turn that into software. Now, we are not going to be actually coding in this class. We'll stop right at the implementation point. But what are all the steps prior to that in order to gather requirements, analyze those requirements, and design a software solution? So in this class, overall, you're going to be learning object-oriented techniques. And that will take you from the requirements stage all the way to the beginning of the implementation stage. In order to do that, you're going to be designing classes. So we'll take different techniques, different models that you can build. We'll analyze, we'll design, and we'll look at these different classes and their relationships to each other. And that's going to enable us to build a model for our business requirements. Again, overall, what we want to make sure is when you leave this class, you feel confident that you can take a very complex software problem and design it appropriately. Again, we talked a little bit about models. So the models that we use in this class are uh, specified in the UML standard. So that's Unified Modeling Language. Just a nice way of describing software without actually having to write any code. Once we have our design uh, that we've created through requirements gathering and analysis, we've got some nice UML that we can look at, then you should be able to implement the software based on that design. Now, although this class focuses on the rational unified process, that's RUP, uh, as far as methodologies are concerned, the idea is that we're going to be giving you a lot of different tools and, and describing what were some of the you know, thoughts and reasons that these tools were produced. And from there, you're able to make decisions about what kind of methodology will actually work best for us in-house. Now, as far as attendee prerequisites are concerned, there's not a whole lot that you need for this particular class. Obviously, the more you know about software, the easier this class is going to be. And so we do expect a little bit of familiarity with general software development, but that does not mean you need to be a programmer yourself. We're not going to be engaging in any programming in this class. Uh, in fact, we have a lot of business analysts who don't program that take this class. And likewise, even if you do have programming experience, do know that it doesn't really matter what type of experience you have. Um, everything that you're going to be learning in this class can be applied to any object-oriented programming language. So if you're programming in C Sharp or Java or Ruby, it doesn't matter. Everything you learn in this class will be applicable to those programming languages. So let's take a quick look at uh, what we'll be covering in this class. The class is spread out over four days. On the first day, we'll start with an overview of OOAD, which is Object Oriented Analysis and Design. And we'll just talk about you know, what are some of the techniques, what's the life cycle, uh, what are some of the modeling languages that we have available to us. And then we'll jump into what's known you know, traditionally as the first phase, which is uh, with requirements. And we'll talk about the workflow that you may want to engage with requirements. So we'll be talking about things like, how do you gather the requirements? How do you uh, engage in a problem analysis? And really, what's the role of UML with requirements? That's expanded upon in the next chapter, chapter three, where we do use case analysis. So we'll have use case models and use case descriptions. On the second day, we move into analysis workflow, which is where we're going to talk about how do we analyze these requirements? What kind of models do we have available? At this point, we're describing the what, not the how, of our software system. Chapter 5 continues with that analysis, where we look at um, how do we grab and understand what kind of classes are in our system. So we'll look at noun verb analysis, CRC cards, different techniques. And once we've identified our class, then we need to talk about the relationships between these classes. So we'll look at class diagrams and object diagrams. On the third day, uh, we move into uh, object state analysis. So what is the transition of different states for a given object over time? So state diagrams are a common way of describing this. We'll look at a few different kind of models that are available. Chapter 8, we have object activity analysis. So now we're looking at the behavior of the system. And one of the most common uh, diagrams that are produced through this is called a sequence diagram. 
with chapter nine, we kind of take a step back and say, okay, let's, uh, we were just in the analysis phase and we're moving into the design phase. So what's the difference between these two? And in particular, how does that relate to the rational unified process? Chapter 10 is where we firmly leave analysis and move into design. So now we're moving more from the what into the how. And so we're changing our analysis models into something that we could actually implement with code. With chapter four, it looks like there's a lot more material that we're cramming in that day. But, you know, not to worry. These are actually just a little bit smaller chapters. So we're able to get through a few more chapters during this particular day. Um, but we're just basically continuing on with design. We're going to look at system design and how that relates to object design. We'll look at other UML diagrams that are available. We'll get back to RUP, the Rational Unified Process, and see how all these different things fit into that uh, particular methodology. Um, we'll look at some other techniques as well, such as refactoring, uh, design and architectural patterns, and also just some you know, techniques that you may want to use for enabling software reuse. So that's a high-level overview of what we teach in the Object-Oriented Analysis Design class. I want to thank you for your time and look forward to seeing you in class.